Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Cars. Welcome to the Monaco track guide and setup. And uh, very quickly, uh, we're going to be doing this next few setups here in the week up uh, right before we go back to Austin. So there's about six tracks left uh, on the backlog, all European tracks. And uh, once we're done with that, well, we'll be going back to Austin uh, to catch up with the real life season. And we're going to be doing this in the week up because, well, Sadly, Danerik is out of F1. Um, well, we'll talk about that some other day. But yeah, for today's setup, um, we'll go over the slow-mo hot lap as usual, explaining corner by corner what to do and what not to do. And then we'll have the setup explanation. And at the end, we'll have the full speed hot lap. Very quickly, thank you to all channel members and subscribers for supporting in whatever way you like. And now, um, let's get started. So... At the end of your lap and at the start of your lap, it's going to be the same way to do it. And uh, keep some throttle, stay tight on the entry and straighten out the car on the exit. Open up DRS if you're in qualifying. And into turn 1, you want to be staying in the middle of the road here, right, right in between these two lanes here. You can see the road marking. So be around here and aim for the 50 meter board uh, as your braking reference. And uh, as you're braking, you'll be turning more and more to the left almost hitting the wall but you know build your confidence lap by lap to go closer to the wall and that will help you to cut turn one as much as possible right the more you cut the more time you gain on the entry and you can carry more speed on the exit here so it's a long uphill run keep your car straight as possible and then before you arrive at the casino area there's a pedestrian crossing down there as you can see uh, that's going to be your turning and braking point so it's sort of let the car run wide and bring it back in and just stay as close as possible to the walls here at the end of sector one you want to spot that yellow barrier on the top left that's going to be your braking reference break in a straight line brake hard down to second gear and uh, at this point you will notice that the front right is not actually touching the ground so you may feel a little bit of understeer but up to third gear to reduce wheel spin and down into the lows hairpin here you want to be taking it in second gear or first gear i prefer to take it in second gear because it reduces the wheel spin as i'm trying to get the power down and coming out of the corner uh, but you can even do this in first gear uh, or you can even drift around there if you want to for qualifying but that's not my style um, now next down to portier stay in the middle of the road and then take a little bit of that race curb not more than this otherwise the car will bottom out and you will lose control and lose time and again uh, similar to the previous corners up to third gear to reduce the overstay on the exit and as you reach this uh, between barriers right in between barriers there's an orange mark that's going to be your turning in point and aim for a better exit and well power down let the car go straight all the way down into the Nouvelle Chicane where your, li uh, where your lives and uh, dreams can come to an end. <laughs> so around 75 meters is where you're braking and then take it in third gear very tight on the chicane and on the exit. There you go. It, it's over so quickly. And now you arrive at the tabac corner. Uh, at the 50 meter mark, this is going to be your turning in point just a mild tap on the brakes usually but otherwise it's almost flat in qualifying flat left, flat right and then you arrive to the swing pool chicane and this is going to be the braking reference that green bush on your left and just tap on the brakes a little bit and uh, take it in fourth gear for the first right hander you can even take it in fifth tight on the right which will help you to open up the next left and cut as much as possible this dumb little chicane and uh, very quickly you'll arrive at the next breaking point at Laraskas. spot that starting of that Pirelli board on the left that's going to be your breaking point break in a straight line stay as tight as possible to the right hand board here but you don't want to be too tight just leave a little gap that way your car makes it through third gear on the exit to reduce wheel spin and the same way you end, uh, started your lap, that's the same way you're going to end your lap as well. So at the orange mark on the left, that's where you're going to be turning in. Stay tight on the right, straighten out the car, stay to the right hand side to minimize track distance and gain lap time. And very quickly, 
it's all over in Monaco. <laughs> well, uh, I'm glad it, it's over in just under a minute and 10 for the hot lap itself usually. But, you know, God knows how many attempts it took to get to a comfortable point here. Let's get to this setup very quickly and uh, discuss a little bit of the changes that we have made to our usual approach in the setup. So first of all, let's uh, mm, save the setup before we forget again. Uh, yeah, let's get into the aerodynamics. 50-50 wings. No other way around Monaco. There's no point debating going even one click lower. We move on to transmission. I use... I'm using 90 on the on throttle um, and then you can use 100 or 80 in between anything's fine 20 off throttle works just nice in the race 10 in qualifying uh, but if you start with 20 off throttle in qualifying then go up to 30 in the race keep 100% engine braking for best uh, performance of slowing down the car right and then uh, yeah uh, just play around with the on throttle in the race maybe 70 maybe 80 a higher is definitely a bit better for traction, but yeah, there you go. Suspension geometry, everything minimum as usual is the fastest way to go around here. And suspension, this is where we uh, always play around to find the most amount of time. I've softened the front suspension a little bit down to 36 and I've raised the front ride height to 22 to give it a little bit of ground clearance. Uh, at the same time, the suspension is soft enough to give me more grip in the slower corners. You can also try 41 on the front suspension with 20 uh, front right height, but it's a bit stiff on the bumps uh, the way I feel it. So try out whichever you want and uh, you know give me your feedback on that. Uh, both are definitely usable. Same thing for the rear suspension. I'm going for 55 on the rear. That's a good amount of clearance around here without bumping into the curbs and bottoming out the car. You can soften the rear suspension, but I didn't really like how the car handled over some of the bumps. So somewhere around 5 to 10 rear suspension is uh, a good spot uh, to go over a lot of the bumps on the road. And you can reduce the ride height to 50, you can even go up to 60. There's a lot of possible options with the suspension and ride height around here. But what's going to make the biggest difference is going to be the anti-roll bars because, well, um, because we are using 50-50 aerodynamics, 50-50 right? wings, uh, there's not much front rotation, front grip here in, with that. So you have to raise the rear anti-roll bar a little bit or, or more to gain a little bit more rear rotation. Let the rear do a lot of the job. And now let's move on to the brakes. So 100% on the brake pressure and 54-55 brake bias. You can even use 56 in the race and tire pressures maximum for the race for qualifying you have to reduce it a little bit to get a little bit more performance and lap time out of it because it's such a slow track it's kind of hard to warm up the tires and uh, and being a slow track you will need a lot more mechanical grip at slow speed so reducing the tire pressures will help you with that you can even go to maybe in the middle for everything that also works so find something that works for you to warm up the tires quickly and at the same time they do not overheat by the end of your lap. Keep it around 75 to 85 degrees Celsius for your tire temperatures all the time. And that is it for Monaco. Thank you so much for watching and I will leave you with the full speed hot lap uh, to enjoy. If you need any help, leave it in the comments. See you next time for Canada.